What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here jumping in on this early Monday morning, May 3rd, 2021's the date. March 3rd, 2021 is the date. The time is 7:12. <laughs> it is uh well early Monday morning you can tell I haven't had my caffeine kicking in yet. Uh I'm gonna do a quick update video considering I missed out on last night's update. Um I just had a overwhelming amount of uh fatigue and, and sleep deprived uh, time on my hands from uh, the Arkansas trip, Nevada, and then last week out in in Texas and Oklahoma finally caught up with me. So I went to bed pretty early, about 7 o'clock my time, and uh, I didn't wake up until about 6.30. So, whoo, almost uh, 12 hours of sleep. Much, much needed, trust me. So now I'm ready to do it again, <laughs> waiting on my next trip. Anyway, 2.6 out here in the Pacific Islands, or the uh, Pacific Ocean, near the Hawaiian Islands. Um, we'll go ahead and check out the uh, latest information on the USGS map right here. Shows activity kind of calming down a little bit on the north part of the uh, Earth. That includes the North American continent all up through Japan into the Aleutian Islands. Things kind of calming down a little bit. Got to go back to the all magnitudes here to see the activity in the North American continent there in California. But uh, even then, it's pretty quiet uh, for the most part. <clears throat> Looking at it down south here through the uh, Solomon Islands up through the in Indonesia area is a line of activity that we've seen for, uh, well, I seen this yesterday when I, uh, when I got home from what I, what I was doing and was going to cover this in the earthquake update. Uh, but like I said, I fell asleep, never got, never got around to it. Uh, pretty good line of activity stretching all the way up here into this region of the world. Even into parts of China, uh, seen a little bit of increase in seismic activity. Nothing big throughout this region, just a couple fours, fives, uh, in a linear fashion, as I mentioned, all up along that plate boundary. Um, and even some newer activity here, um, just to the south, uh, well south of Japan, this area that we're kind of watching up here, well south into the Mariana Trench area. Uh, even a little bit inland as well into the uh, w well below the surface 291 kilometers for that 4.2 uh, so deep activity continu continuing down south um, multitudes continuing down south quiet activity continues to the north here um, eventually that's going to change uh, that's that's a fact <laughs> it's going to change in a big way here probably uh, pretty soon um, there hasn't been much activity, folks, since that 6.8 that struck uh, a couple days ago now. Very quiet activity through the Japan Trench all up along the Aleutian Islands. Um, and the quietness continues throughout the Gulf of Alaska and even down along the West Coast. Yes, there is uh, sporadic microquake activity, but there's nothing really to write home about. In fact, if you look at the 2.5 and above, there's only one uh, 2.5 down here near Brawley right at the Brawley seismic zone, right at the end of it, where the uh, kind of the Imperial Fault and the Brawley, uh, the Brawley Fault and the Imperial Fault system meet, or I shouldn't say meet, but almost swap uh, locations there. Uh, so you gotta go <clears throat> all magnitudes here, just to see some of this microquake activity taking place, and even then, it's not even that big of a deal. Uh, Ridgecrest looks awfully quiet. Uh, really quiet, almost diminished earthquake activity. Yes, there's a couple within the past hour, uh, but overall, just I mean, just ten, 10 earthquakes. And if you want to go specifically, yeah, it just this is pretty pretty quiet for this region. So things on the uh, things on in limbo at the moment, I would say, uh, especially north of the uh, uh, Tropic of Cancer line. You can see that on that map right there that USGS has locked in. Um, but I think things will pick up. Um, if I had to say so, I believe we'll see the West or the uh, uh, Japan area over here kick off first. Um, potentially, it's uh, it's like I say. It's we've been watching this for a couple of weeks now. It's just been awfully quiet. 6.8, as I mentioned, is uh, a good sized quake. Uh, as I mentioned in my other update videos, I should say that's a pretty good quake, but it just did not relieve enough pressure out there in that region. Um, Hawaii <clears throat> moving in, kind of seeing some activity that we've seen uh, the other day around Kilauea Volcano, a little increase in earthquake activity 
fairly deep as well, uh, at least for this one, 38 kilometers, and some uh, some further shallow earthquake right around the Kilauea Rim. Just kind of monitoring that for possibly increased seismic or uh, possibly increased volcanic activity there. We'll cover that a little bit later um, tonight <clears throat> when I have some time to research that and uh, see what the uh, magma flow and lava flow has been like there. Um, so overall, folks, um, just not a whole lot of movement. I've seen a tornado hit uh, ooh, Tupelo, Mississippi last night. That was kind of scary right in the middle of the night. Not good. I'm kind of still watching uh, my storm chase possibilities here. Uh, Oklahoma's got a, a possibility today, but not anything I want to jump on. I kind of want to head out there on the next moderate or high risk day. Uh, and then from there we can uh, put our storm chase gear in and on and, and go have some more fun. But uh, I'm going to hold off until uh, at least a moderate, <clears throat> moderate risk day for that area. Trimmer. I've seen a couple of folks asking about the trimmer last night. Well, it's continuing, folks. It has not let up. And that's that kind of plays in part with the lack of extreme... The lack of... Uh, of... Uh, movement around Japan, right? It's still building up quite a bit of resistance over there. Uh, and has not completely uh, released enough pressure out here along the West Coast. Even though we're not seeing a tremendous amount of surface... Um, earthquakes we are seeing it below here along the west coast and right smack dab in that area of the central coast of Oregon 609 epicenters of trimmer uh, even stretching down into parts of northern California as well uh, you can see that blob of activity right there at the southern end of the Cascadia <clears throat> so um, this continuing still ultimately I believe puts a fra uh, puts a risk of uh, seeing a quake out here along the Cascadia or possibly more earthquake activity along the either the Gorda or the Blanco fracture zones up here. Um, that's west of the locked section of the Cascadia subduction zone. That's still quite a good amount of trimmer. And that's been confined, folks, to that area for quite some time. We can go back, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I just got something stuck in my throat. Let's go back uh, 19th through the uh, through the uh, third. Let's check that out real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. So, and this goes back even further than the 19th. Because I remember checking this out uh, right before I went uh, to uh, down to Long Valley Super Volcano. Right there, all over Oregon. This and as and as I've mentioned, folks, this is not this area here has not seen a good amount of trimmer release in quite some time. So the buildup of pressure is not only locked up here along the Cascadia in the central part uh, of the Oregon coast, or just off the Oregon coast. Um, I believe we were looking at now. I think this trimmer may have saved a. Uh, uh, somewhat larger, not larger, but a, at least a moderate size, deeper earthquake here in central Oregon. Um, Trimmer, I believe, uh, is a good release of strain pressure down, down deep, down, down, uh, downstream, if you will. But um, as always, I, I, have, I believe that's going to add some further pressure back upstream, up along the lock section. Um, a lot of times, if you look at um, past historical earthquake activity, we've seen movement, deeper movement into Oregon, Washington, um, areas where, you know, the trimmer does not fully uh, release its little vibration of pressure. It will actually build up due to lack of trimmer and produce a, uh, a pretty good sized earthquake down there. Um, down, down dip, downstream, where the trimmer is actually building up. It's actually a little... Um, I would say a little bit up, more upstream than what the trimmer is doing, but I think all this activity has kind of relieved that possibility of a, of a, uh, of a deep earthquake here in this region. But um, ultimately, when you get a plate subducting, right, that's going to add, uh, potentially add some back building of pressure 
further back here to the west, up along the Cascadia. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to check on those deep earthquakes. I can't remember exactly where they were at. I know Klamath Falls had one. <clears throat> a couple other areas around here, but I can't remember um, how big they were, the exact deep or the depth level, but I know they were deeper than surface quakes for sure. Uh, and it had a lot to do with what was going on here back at the time with the uh, trimmer and the uh, the lack of it at the time. But uh, yeah, so quite a bit of activity, folks. And once again, this is from the 19th, 6,422 epicenters of trimmer. Um, today, we've seen 600 and something. So the activity continues there in uh, the Cascadia subduction zone or yeah, the Cascadia subduction zone, but down dip, downstream, uh, right at the uh, slippage area, about 30, uh, 30 to 40 kilometers downstream, I believe. Somewhere around there, 25 to 35. All right, folks, um, let's see what else we got here. Got to get off here, let my caffeine kick in. Yellowstone National Park, not really showing anything. Not for sure what in the world this is up here. It could potentially be, I'm starting to think it's more interference than anything because um, I've been watching it for the past couple days. It is showing up, yes, on this station as well, but at the same strength and same, <clears throat> basically the same measurements, which wouldn't make sense. <clears throat> if it was something, you know, um, happening around that area, it would show up uh, potentially lighter on one or the other or show up on other stations um, around it, but I just don't see it. I'm not seeing that at all on any of the other local stations so that's some type of uh, some type of interference going on there on those two stations mammoth lake and soda butte in yellowstone national park um other than that the rest of the park the rest of super volcano looks pretty gosh darn quiet all right folks i'm gonna get out here uh try to get my voice back i think it's a dry air out here in california it's so so used to the uh the uh, gulf moisture out there in the in the uh texas and oklahoma area we got a horrible north wind today, um, drying things out like crazy. High fire danger here in California. It's not going to be good. I'm not ready for fire season. There shouldn't even be a fire season here. Doesn't make sense. Anyway, um, yeah, I just seen that uh, 3.5 out there right around the Pecos, Texas area. That's kind of about the only spot that's really... Uh, really active out there huh on the map that's kind of odd all right guys i'm gonna jump off here i'll have a good day i will be back a little bit later with the full complete update pending my voice does not disappear completely have a good day we'll chat you guys a little bit later stay safe